Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, what you're gonna be watching here is just some uh, footage of me testing out some different frames, uh, some things I might switch to in the future. Uh, expect some reviews to be coming out uh, shortly. Uh, we should have about six different frames that we're gonna be testing over here. So we're gonna have a lot of reviews on the channel, so get ready for that, they're coming. But other than that, before we get into this video and what I wanna talk about, please make sure if you're not subscribed that you go ahead and subscribe right now. A vast majority of people that watch my videos are not subscribed. Uh, so please, it would help me out greatly. I'm trying to become monetized in this channel so it can help fund my travels for professional tennis as it's really, really expensive. But let's go ahead and get into the topic of today's video. Uh, I've just been seeing a lot of different things happening now that I've been looking at changing rackets within uh, tennis companies. And one of the big things that I've been seeing are the big brands and the well-known names really just price gouging people. And there are tons of companies out there that have no business charging what they are charging for their equipment. At least from what I heard in the past, rackets cost around $25 to produce, and you see like some of the big names charging $270, $280 a stick now. They have such a big presence on tour, like let's say like the Babolats and Wilson's heads of the world, that they have been able to charge a ridiculous amount. I think it's actually forcing people away from tennis. The barrier to entry is becoming so expensive now that it's really tough for people to kind of justify paying, you know, 500 plus dollars for two frames. I mean, it just doesn't quite make sense. I will say there's like one caveat to this and there's of course always one exception. And in my opinion, that's Yonex. They are charging quite a bit for their rackets. However, I do believe that with Yonex, their quality control is so good that they can uh, kind of position themselves as a premium brand and uh, charge pre uh, premium prices for that. Now, companies like Wilson and Babylon, no doubt they make great rackets. Not, and I just wanna make it very clear, all these companies that I'm gonna list here make excellent rackets, but I don't think there should be anywhere near that expensive. I remember growing up buying rackets as as a, as a as a junior. I mean, at the most, I was paying like 170 at the most, uh, and and now it's just ridiculous, like well over 200 dollars um, for frames. You know, let's let's go ahead and like just pick on Babolat here, for example. I think I've seen some arrows now. They're gonna be going for 270, 280 dollars in this next cycle. I like Babolat. I've been a Babolat player for a very long time. Um, However, I, I can't even think about paying $270 for an arrow. That that blows my mind. I mean, it's, it's just far too expensive. And let's think about like a pure drive. I think they're selling for about 260 right now online. I just can't understand why anybody would pay $260 for a pure drive. It doesn't make sense anymore. When there's a lot of companies making very similar rackets to a pure drive because it is such a well-selling racket that you can get them for really, really cheap. For example, right now Dunlop is positioning themselves in the market extremely well. They've lowered all their prices for all their new rackets to 199 Plus, Dunlop's quality is just as good as Babolat's. Their quality control is very, very nice. Uh, they're pretty much manufactured, I guess, in the same factories. As far as I understand, there's about three or four different factories that things can be manufactured in, unless you're Yonix and you manufacture stuff in-house. But, you know, you're pretty much getting stuff from the fa same factory, same guidelines, same quality control. So let's say, you know, you can, you can get a Dunlop FX500, which is a great uh, kind of like a uh, a pure drive type of clone. Uh, Selinko, the company that they do sponsor me now, so take this with a grain of salt, but this, uh, the Selinko uh, Blackout is another pretty much a pure drive clone. So you can play with something like that that's much cheaper than it's going to be to than uh, going with Babolat. Uh, and there's just a ton of companies making these kind of rackets that are power based rackets for a fraction of the cost. But you don't hear about them and it's, it's a little bit tough because they don't have the same marketing power that these big brands have but i'm telling you the quality is there you have to trust me on this the, the dunlops i've been playing with have been very nice rackets very very good rackets and the same thing goes i'm trying some vocal rackets now vocal yes they do they I think they're more in like the 230 dollar range but still very nice rackets i mean they have a history of making unbelievable rackets so you, you just gotta look at that oh another another company uh, diadem uh, I know they're competitors with Selenko, but you know, the Diadem uh, Nova is also like a, a direct clone of a pure drive. It just doesn't make sense why uh, the pure drive itself is so expensive, along with a bunch of other frames, uh, Wilson Blades, Pro Staffs, uh, anything of that nature. Now, I can understand, and I, I talked actually to my coach about this, he brought it up to me saying he understands, and I understand as well now too, if you have a signature frame, let's say if you have like an RF-97 from Wilson, or you have the... Uh, the Pure Arrow Rafa. And if you want to put that at a premium price because you might not sell uh, you know, as many with like the, the big weights or you shouldn't sell as many with that type of weight, although that's not really how it's been happening, I think that's fine. But there needs to be kind of like a line drawn where we cannot keep going higher and higher and higher in the price and expect 
uh, new players to be able to come in. New players don't have that type of money. You have the older players who are the retired that have that kind of money. We're not going to be able to get new players because of stuff like this. Um, another example is uh, within shoes. I mean, shoes have been a, a big problem for me recently. I've been switching around for a bunch of different shoes. I have landed on the uh, Nike Vapor Pros, not the Pro 2s that just came out, but I've, I have a small stockpile of Vapor Pros that I'm going to be using for uh, as much of the season as I possibly can. But you know, Adidas barricades used to be my bread and butter. The old school barricades, not the new ones that came out. They're my bread and butter because they had the six month warranty. They're extremely durable, comfortable for me. I know some people have some problems, but very comfortable for me, very stable. I love that shoe. But the six month warranty is what really was great. And I think they were priced around $120 at the time or maybe 130. But the six month warranty justified that price. Now shoes are getting so expensive. And I know the vapors are kind of an exception to that, but you see from Adidas, they're, they're charging outrageous numbers for shoes that don't have six month warranties uh, with quality that isn't making sense of that price. Uh, and the six month warranty thing is just, is, is a big blow. Like there's so many great shoes out there that I have tried in the past that didn't have the six month and were just too expensive for me to even try it. Think about continuing playing with them. It just would break my budget. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm gonna be looking at <laughs> smaller brands and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that like, I'm gonna switch to a brand that that is cheaper. I know that's kind of hypocritical of me, but you have to understand I'm gonna play with whatever I play best with. and. It's kind of an ethical dilemma for me because I, I don't really want to support uh, price gouging. But at the same time, I want to play the best tennis I can play. And if it means I'm going to play with a $300 frame, then I'll play with a $300 frame. If it's going to be a $100 frame, I'll play with a $100 frame. Um, if it's Artango, good. Babolat, good. I couldn't care as long as it gives me the best performance. But I know there are people that are not like myself in my situation who cannot do that. And having Babolat, Wilson, Head, bigger companies charge as much as they are is ridiculous in my opinion. It's absolutely absurd. You know, I, I, I'm even thinking about looking now at more like uh, New Balance for shoes. I mean, they, I think majority of their shoes have uh, six month warranties. They have like a Vapor, a Nike Vapor clone, and I think it's called a 996, that has a six month, and it's lighter than the Vapor. And it's supposed to be more comfortable than the Vapor. I mean, how, how can you even, how can the Vapor be worth $120 at that point? I know it's considered a cheap price point for tennis shoes, but how can it be worth that? When you don't have the six month, you don't have the comfort, and the build quality is not quite the same. It just kind of blows my mind that that companies are willing to gouge their customers like to this degree, and you know, just be okay with it. I mean, they're killing the sport because people cannot afford some of the stuff that they sell. It's just too expensive to play tennis. Same thing with strings. Luxalot, I know, is a heritage brand. Their strings are not that good. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry to say. Luxalon does not make amazing strings anymore. The Al Alu Power is an old string. It's old technology. Why does it cost so much? So much. I tell you, it costs so much because people know the name and nothing else. You can go out and get Vocal Cyclone. You can get Selenko's products. You can get Diadem products that are much cheaper. Miami strings. Uh, there's a, a, a whole you know, a grapple snake. Grapple snake. There's a whole big world of strings as well. And just tennis gear in general that is cheaper and is better quality than the big brands. And I'm really getting tired of seeing Babolat, Wilson, Nike, um, Luxalon, any of the, the OG brands charging this stuff because it is just sad. They're charging for stuff that is of equal or lesser quality than, than some of the other companies out there and it's, it's really sad. Uh, you know, for me, the only reason I'm able to play and Nike Vapor Pros right now is because I got them on sale for $70 a piece. It's the only reason I'm buying them. If I, if I had to pay full price, I would never. And the same thing goes for rackets. I refuse to pay full price for a racket at this point. I'm only getting my, uh, my rackets either through deals or through going through my, you know, my boss or my club's uh, uh, affiliation with a certain brand. Um, or, or I can get my own affiliation as a coach or as a player to, to afford it, but otherwise I'm not touching it. Thank you guys so much for listening to me rant about this for a little bit. Um, and if you know any sort of products that play amazing but are not uh, really that expensive, please leave them down in the comment section down below. Um, I'll go ahead and get it started. If you go to Tennis Warehouse and look up the Tennis Only Proto String, they're selling it for about six bucks a pack right now. And it's an unbelievable, unbelievable uh, a string that they are using in all their demo rackets, it plays very good. I, I recommend if you're on a budget and you're looking for a poly, go for the Proto if you can't afford the Slinko products, 100%. But go ahead and leave down in the comments down below uh, what other products 
that might help people be able to afford tennis and what brands are just underrated right now and are not getting the love that they deserve. I think everybody should be able to play tennis and I think everybody should have uh, an ability to get in and, and financials not be uh, a big determining factor whether or not you can play. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.